What's going on, y'all? I'm trying to get this review out real quick to the point because y'all know the VMA is gonna come on right after, and I'm doing, I'm recording on the episode, the epi, um, recording during the commercial breaks and shit like that because I want to tweet with y'all. You know, we act the fool when the war shows come on. But here's my thing, DH1. Let me just give y'all a little read right quick. Get y'all shit together. Go check y'all staff because there is no reason why y'all episodes to y'all shows should be leaking days before they come on. In this case, weeks. Okay? Let me tell y'all why. Just in case y'all want to know, I'm finna put y'all on some shit. Next week's episodes for Lo uh, Basketball Wise is already out. If you already seen um, Love and Hip Hop Reunion Part 2 for Atlanta and the guy that put it on Facebook, he didn't release the episode for next week's episode of um, Basketball Wise LA. And that's when Tammy Roman comes on. I haven't looked at the whole thing because I'm like, bitch, let me watch this first. But, um, you know, VH1, y'all need to fire somebody because ain't no way in hell these shit should be leaking like this. But either way, I'm fine with it, but I'm just saying y'all need to get that shit together. So we start this episode off. This is episode 8. And it's the aftermath. We got Brandy going over to Malaysia house. Malaysia like, girl, you know, one of them asked why the door was locked or some shit like that. And then Malaysia was like, bitch, you got the key to my house or some shit like that. I said, mm. You know, and it kind of made me think about when Tammy was talking to uh, Shani and she was like, they clit sisters or some shit like that. Making it seem like, did they fuck each other? Because Tammy is going to ask them that. And I'm really much here for it because... It kind of did seem that way. But, you know, some girls, especially girls, they be close like that and don't even mean nothing. You know, girls can show affection like that and don't have nothing gay between them. Um, you know, when if a nigga do that to their uh, straight male friend or whatever, they straight, oh, nigga, no homo, you get, no, get the fuck out of here. But anyway, basically, they talking about, I guess, when we saw that little dinner or whatever they had, the aftermath of that from last week. And this was from the producer's camera. I don't know if the producers actually put this up there, even though it said producer's camera, you know. And I was kind of pissed when I first initially heard this. You know, when Dredd was like, basically, bitch, your story is boring. Don't nobody want to hear about you and your cancer. Cancer is boring and all that shit. And I had been seeing this clip like weeks ago before this even aired. And it pissed me the fuck off. And I'm pissed off about that coming out and her saying something like that, especially when there's a lot of people out here who's, you know, dealing with somebody who has different types of cancers or whatever. Me, personally, I literally just found out some shit about someone that I care deeply about who actually has cancer, okay? And, you know, to hear somebody say that it's boring, it's, it's, it's not boring. It's hard, okay? It's irritating. It's frustrating. It's all of that. It's painful, you know? But... I was like, you know, I'm going to read this bitch, but let me wait until the context of what this shit was said and all this stuff. Dre did say it was born, and she said it was born for this show, because I even said the shit last week that I was going to go in, but I waited. And then Dre said it was born for this show. Dre also did some little damage control and put a little post up on Instagram. You know, I sent it on the shade room, basically saying that what she said was, you know, it was boring. Cancer is not boring, but it's born for this show in the sense that, you, oh, excuse me, that, you know, this show is about, you know, women getting into it with each other and bickering over the smallest, stupidest, pettiest shit, you know, so they don't want nothing serious and real like cancer on there and being your storyline and all that stuff and yada, 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 so it'll be boring. And, and with that explanation, I can totally understand what she's saying because then she even went on ahead and said, you know, for this show, you know, maybe it'll be better on another show where people actually going to pay attention to it. Because my initial thought was, yes, I appreciated Brandy and her story on the first last season when she came on. And it was something different. And they weren't doing all that bickering or whatever. We getting something fresh. Okay, this girl is a bre uh, breast cancer survivor. Was it breast cancer or ovarian cancer? Whichever one. She's a cancer survivor. All right? She's trying to have kids. That's a real life issue instead of this petty bullshit. So in a sense, I can understand how people can say, well, yeah, that's a real life issue. But I mean, I get where Dre coming from. It's a little bit boring for this show. True enough, I get it. But Dre did went on ahead and said that, you know, she said that shit out of anger because, you know, they was going back and forth at it. And because of this whole argument and stuff like that, she lost two friends. You know, I guess Brandy in Malaysia. But my thing of it is, sometimes when you say shit out of anger, that be the shit that you really be trying to say and you just be holding back. Sometimes when people say shit out of anger, it's not by accident. It's what they really feeling. Okay. You know, it probably been on her heart. So yeah, it's fucked up what Dre said. It really is fucked up. And given that Brandy is, you know, it's talking about her, 
I can see and understand why Drea, I mean, Brandy are pissed off at Drea and anybody else who would be. But I'm not going to go too hard on her because, like I said, I get where Drea was coming from doing her little explanation. But it was still fucked up, okay? Like I said, you know, a lot of us know somebody personally who, you know, is dealing with that or dealt with that or seen the, you know, the horror and, and the bullshit that has to go along with that for it to say that it's boring or whatever. But I get what she's saying about being on this show. It's boring for that platform. You know, it, it, it's all about words and context, okay? It's all about words and context. Um, But truth be told, this season, Brandy ain't really said shit about her cancer, whatever. She talking about her boyfriend, her husband, and all that shit. Truth be told, that's what she was talking about. Her, I, I, I haven't really heard it this season. Last season, yes, because she was initially new. But this season, maybe once. I don't even know. Y'all let me know. But I get what I get what Dread coming from and I get I get what Brandy coming from and I can understand how she can feel like that shit is insensitive as fuck. But you know, like I said, sometimes when you get angry you say some shit that you think that really be on your heart sometimes and so you disguise it and say, No, I just said it because I was angry. No, you kinda felt that too. You know, I, I get it. But um pretty sure y'all gonna debate in the comments about that. And <coughs> See, I try to get both sides. Um, you know, Brandy, her her husband comes back home, and basically, he trying to see what's up. They trying to fix that relationship. I'm tired of them. You know, truth be honest, I'm tired of them in this storyline because Brandy is not. I know, I know, I know. People go through this shit, and it takes a lot, you know, to get back on the footing of you know trusting someone after they cheated on you and all this stuff. But I just feel like. Brandy, okay, he did this a while ago. If you're going to forgive this man, you talking about something, you not going to get a divorce. This man has been gone for so long, and you putting him in time out, and he coming home, and he can't even stay at least on the couch. This motherfucker got to go sleep in a hotel. How y'all working on y'all problems like that? But, you know, they go through their shit, and I'm just like, okay, next. So, Malaysia goes over to Angel's shop, and, you know, they having this cancer event. Um, and the theme is going to be the Great Gatsby or whatever. And, you know, she was like, since I'm a drama queen, they had her made her dress fit for a queen. I thought it was pretty cool that Angel, it, you know, she, you know, went on ahead. And I feel like Angel is trying to get to know the girls. And she not really, when I, I don't know. She's just trying to get to know them. And at this point, mo moment in time, she's not really trying to pick sides. But, of course, her loyalty is going to lie with Dredd because that's the person that she's known the longest, okay? So I put that out there for a reason. Because, you know, um, Angel said that she might not be coming to the event. She's not coming to the event because Dre is not coming to the event. And, you know, Malaysia feels like Angel needs to have her own mind. And I get that. But, you know, Angel thinking, like, at the dodgeball event, mind y'all, the dodgeball event wasn't even about Drea. You know, Megan used that dodgeball event to fuck up Jackie. That's what it was. So, you know, that's where I was coming from with my shit. But, you know, I guess a lot of people missed that. But, um, anyway, um, she didn't like the way that Drea felt afterwards. So, she was like, basically, she gonna be kicking it with her girl. And I could understand that. She felt the way because, you know, according to a lot of people, you know, if... I, I still was wondering, too. And as, like, like a, a lot of people, you know, even... Angel is not really cool with them. Like, she's just introducing to the group, but she stayed at the dodgeball event instead of, you know, going after her friend. And I don't know if she's trying to make up for, you know, leaving Drea behind or staying behind and not going with Drea. But either way, she's going to have her friend back. And, you know, Malaysia feel like mm, she's selling herself short by not coming to the event, by siding with somebody who's wrong or whatever. But that's her friend. And 9 out of 10... Drea probably don't, pro she don't probably know everything that's been going on or whatever. Drea probably telling her one side, she, she, y'all probably going to tell her another side, or y'all not even going to talk that much like that to get the other side. So, of course, she going to tend to believe her friend or whatever, and they've been friends for over 10 years or whatever. So, of course, she gonna, her loyalty going to lie with Drea. So, I'm so not surprised that, you know, she's not going to show up if she don't show up, you know, her saying that. And I'm like, Brandy would have did the same thing for you, you know, Malaysia, so you should probably understand that shit. Um, moving on from that, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that shit. Um, uh, moving on from that, Shani, this thing with Shani and her son, Miles, is his singing in high school, and, you know, he talking about school is boring. That boy got Shani's nose and Shaq complexion. Like, that, that that's both they child together, um, for real, for real. And 
he's supposed to have a clothing line. She like, girl, why don't you, you know, get a job at a retail store or whatever, and I'll back your clothing line, and you got to get it in a store and shit. Man, I wish I had a parent with, um, you know, lots and lots of money like this, and I can just coast through life like this. Shit. She got, he got two. Girl, okay, whatever. Um, I will say this. This season <coughs> of Basketball Wives, I guess we are trying to have a villain. And, you know, most of the times it used to be Jackie. Now it's like they're trying to pit and put all the bullshit and edit in it so that we can all be like Drea fucked up. I will admit that. That's what it looked like, you know. And that's where most of my reviews and my um, opinion is coming from. But I see what's going on. But, you know, like I said, I'm only reviewing on what I see. So, you know, it is what it is. Kind of fucked up, but that's what it is. So, Brandy and Jason, they go to a counselor. Basically, Brandy is like her trust is broken with him. He, you know, he disappointed and broke the trust of her, the family, and all that bullshit. And, you know, basically, they got to get their shit together. That's the gist of it, okay? Like I said, a lot of parts was like, you know, fill parts. You know, I just want to get to the part of the party, okay? That's what we wait for. We just want to get to the bullshit with the party. But, you know, it was a cute little scene with Shiny. Shiny and Lil Marlon going out to paint. I was like, oh, they still together? Five plus? You know, she was like, she'd been divorced for like five years or something like that. And her and Marlon still been together. I said, that's kind of cute. She better keep that young boy. And I can kind of appreciate the fact that, you know, Shiny, uh, Marlon has a good relationship with her son because, you know, she was trying to question him and see what they be talking about. Do they talk about school and stuff like that? He was like, not necessarily, but we talk about other things. And I can't tell you because, you know, I ain't finna, you know, um, betray his trust and like that and shit like that. You know, she was trying to get the little info. It was cute. It was cute. Mm, yeah, it was cute. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> So, Malaysia goes and talks to Jason. Come to find out, Jason and Malaysia ex, they played on the same team. And, you know, she trying to remind Jason. So, it's like, Brandy can't, you mean to tell me? I know they, Malaysia just being a good friend, but damn, Brandy couldn't tell her this? Tell him this? This is exactly what Brandy be telling him. So, sometimes you can't get the point unless somebody else tell her. But, you know, Brand, uh, Malaysia was like, she just wants you to do this the way that y'all was doing in high school and when you just brought her flowers out the blue and when her feet was hurting at the concert and you picked her up, you know, we just sitting around waiting for our boys to grow up and be men and stop acting like little boys. Girl, so how was Gennaro? You know, you missed that boy. And no, I don't. I'm just glad that I'm being free. Why you ask about him? Girl, whatever. Okay, move on. Then, um, you know, we get this little scene with Angel and her mom. Her mom comes over. It was cute with the little kids and all that. Her kids are very pretty. I like that. Um, the little dynamic that we saw between them. And basically, Angel talking about the Tyreek, her baby daddy, uh, the little girl, and how she feels about him. And, oh, my God. <laughs> mom, I'm just going to be alone. No. Your mom is sitting there talking, even though I felt like the mama was judging a little bit, talking about something. When I first saw him, I knew that he wasn't going to be no good. I knew he wasn't going to be no good man. I knew he wasn't going to be no good spouse, nor no good baby daddy. And I said, damn. Well, what the fuck did you think he was going to do? Okay, but, you know, give him a benefit of the doubt. She didn't. And, you know, she was like, basically, why don't you just move the fuck on? I told you how it is with these basketball players or whatever. I'm like, mama was scorned in her life sometimes. And, you know, I guess she's just looking out for her daughter. And I'm sitting here like, you crying over this man who constantly telling you from what we're seeing or what we're hearing from you. You know, you painting him out to be this cheater, this asshole or whatever. But you crying over him because you want him. And I know the heart wants what the heart wants. But sometimes we got to say, fuck that. That's, what not, that's not what I need. And there's more plenty good people out here that's for you that can, you know, give you what you need and love you the right way. Girl, chuck them tears, say deuces to them, and move the fuck on to somebody else who really wants you for you, okay? And who will stick around and raise both your kids plus theirs because, you know, y'all might have some together. Moving on. So, it's the cancer event. We finally see Jackie. Um, Everybody shows up. Malaysia doesn't wear angel dress because she said it wasn't all to right in the butt. But, you know, she was like, she brought her back up because angel's not supposed to be there, right? Rome, you know, shiny, being shiny, Carly Red, a.k.a. Shiny of this season, was basically like, you know, what's going on? Why Dre and I come in and all this stuff? What's the heat? What's this and what's that? And while they're about to discuss it, here comes Dre and Angel. Mind you, Brandy earlier had said she blocked that bitch, you know, and 
basically they said that they weren't going to come. I was sitting here like, Drea, what you doing there? So, hmm, we'll see. And I was just like, you know, they, it, it almost looked like it got to feel like, so you got blocked, you got cursed out, you come, you can either look at it like, okay, I realized what I did was wrong, so I'm going to still show up and support my friend, or I'm going to think that we still going to be friends and could able to work this out, or she's just there for the cameras. Either way, we'll see. So, when Dre gets there, and, you know, basically, she claims that she's there for cancer, but the event is Brandy's event, slash Jackie's event, but you said that the shit was born, so I get where Brandy was coming from, but, you know... Malaysia talk about something. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not. If you don't like the bitch, why hug her? Like, I ain't going to be fake with a bitch. Don't, you know, I just say whatever. But don't touch me at this moment in time. And, you know, Drea was like, I'm not going to start the hugging thing or whatever. And she kind of brushed it off like she, nobody was supposed to have a problem with her. Like, especially Brandy. She, uh, she's confused as to why she's getting a cold shoulder. At one point in time after she go talk to Jackie... Um, they sitting on the couch and they talking or whatever. Brandy was ignoring her and she was like, so what's the problem? Is there an issue? And Brandy was like, are you really here for me? I mean, for the event or whatever, or, you know, because you said you're here for cancer or whatever the fuck, you know, something that you said was boring. I never called, um, cancer boring. I said you were born and they played it back and she didn't say that Brandy was born. You know, like I said, boring's mean thing. She probably forgot whatever the fuck. I just didn't appreciate the fact that she came there and was saying, like, you know, nothing happened between them. Like, there was no argument. So, you know, of course, Brandy had no right to be pissed off. Brandy had a right to be pissed off. But, you know, the producers making this thing like, I don't know if it's the producers. I don't know if it's really Dre. I don't know if it's editing. But they really is making this thing like, you know, Dre just being a bitch. Okay? And... You know, she was just here for some camera time and all that stuff. And she really didn't give a fuck because that was kind of the impressions that she was giving off. And, you know, Angel kind of fell away because Malaysia didn't wear that dress. Girl, Malaysia explained to you what happened. And if you didn't feel like it, girl, fuck it. She ain't wear your shit. I know you was trying to get it out there for pre free promo or whatever. But, bitch, you got it out there earlier for some promo. So, you got promo for it. And I'm pretty sure you got paid for it. So, be happy about that. But then, what irked me about Angel... When they was getting into it, um, when they was talking, Drea and Brandy trying to go back and forth, it was so stupid. Angel wanted to butt in and was like, well, that's not what she said. Malaysia was like, no, you were not. Brandy and Malaysia was like, no, you were not there, so you can't say. This ain't in between you. And I was very much here for that because I'm like, Angel, I get you trying to take up for your girl. And, you know, Malaysia trying to take up for Brandy. But Malaysia kind of sat there quiet until, you know, um, Angel stepped in and said something. Because, Angel, you were not there, so you don't know what really happened. So you can't really comment on it, okay? Let them figure that shit out. And then, you know, Brandy got extra pissed and was like, bitch, if you're not here for whatever, get the fuck out. You dead to me. You know, they basically said fuck you to each other and left, you know? And M Angel trying to explain herself, and Malaysia was like, don't don't try to play me. Don't try to play me. I'm like, girl, y'all just, this is stupid. This is fucking stupid. The bitch showed up, whether she showed up for camera time or not. Did she get a donation? Did she give a donation or something? That's what I want to know. If she left empty-handed and came empty-handed, then I feel a type of way. But, you know, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that shit. It was just too much of nothing. I know y'all finna go in. So, at the very end, you know, Drea walks out. Some dude tried to get a picture. And basically, she was being very insensitive and acting like she don't understand why Brandy is pissed off. And was like, you know, Angel trying to tell her she looked really mad. But she was like, bitch, you know, fuck her. She always looking mad. She gonna need Botox and plastic surgery by the time she this and she that. And it was real fucked up. Like, girl, Angel was like, go up there and apologize. You know, and I just... I guess, girl, you know, you really not, in that moment, you did look like a little bitch, okay? You did look like an insistitive bitch, and Brandy, I just want y'all, if y'all not gonna fuck with each other, don't fuck with each other, okay? Let it the fuck go and move the fuck on. Kelly Osborne look a wreck, okay? I just don't get it. But anyway, that was Basketball Wise, y'all. I'm finna go look at the VMAs, and I will see y'all later. Peace. Married to Medicine will be up after the VMAs. One more thing. I was like, when Dre was saying all that stuff behind um, Brandy back about her, 
I was just like, girl, Angel, if she could say that and, and she claimed that Brandy was her friend and she could say that all behind her back, imagine the shit that she probably said about you behind hers, behind yours, girl. Mm.